All right. Well, I'm getting a phone call. It's like a hangout in Persona 5 Royal where they just call you afterwards. Hello, Harmonia. This is Sada. Oh, I haven't seen you, like, ever since the beginning of the game. Well, your PNG, I mean. I detect that Karaidon has regained some of its original power. What, you just have, like, some sort of a monitoring device in my dragon? That's not cool. While riding upon it, it seems you should now be able to move across the water. Yeah, that's what <laughs> some of the previous lines of text meant. How to move across the water? <laughs> Get into the water. Use the left stick. Why can I move across bodies of water, opening up new ways to get around? Press the B button while you're in the water, because I don't can even jump. I've been able to jump out of water, like, before, just in, like, really shallow water and stuff. Hope you will continue to explore Paldea with Karaidon, as you've done here. Route is not fixed, but open before you. Seek out your own path, using your map and the tools you have at hand. Whenever you find your curiosity peaks, you should go and explore as your heart desires. There's no reason to explore in this game, though. Like, there straight up isn't. Like, go get more fast travel points, I guess. But, you know, if you're exploring around to find more Pokemon, there's no point in doing that unless you have gym badges for them to listen to you. Um, if you're trying to get fast travel points, then great, you've gotten that, and then they're done forever. I guess you can find some raid dens and stuff like that. But there's literally nothing to find out in this world except for Pokemon. <laughs> you know? And if you, uh, and if you know where they all are and stuff already, there's literally no point to, uh, explore. Like, I genuinely never find my curiosity peaked in this uh, game. How are you doing today, Stone Sloth? It's been pretty alrighty over here. I'm doing pretty well. I had a really great evening spending time with my family there. Well, that experience will help you grow in some way, great or small. Go forth on your journey and take good care of Coridon for me. I thought Coridon was Arvin's, not yours. What do I know? What do I know about stuff? But yeah, let's, uh, let's just see here. Um, you can come out and it doesn't necessarily contradict your first thoughts. I mean... <laughs> but yeah, I recently started the game and during the tutorial we fought a Pokemon on a cliff and the game glitched on you on top of it for the battle animation. Then walked all the way to Narnia without even finishing the tutorial. What? <laughs> you what now? Also, where are we going next? Um, I'm gonna put it to a vote. We'll do like the Path of Legends ones. You know, so we'll do the Titan stuff to get all that stuff. But in terms of the next ones, it can be any of the four. Oh, uh, look at this dude over here. Oh, look at that guy. I keep on thinking that's going to be like the run button or something like that. You know, I thought that the lake literally being like glitched upwards was just a day one version thing. That maybe because I hadn't installed the day one patch. That that's just like a version 1.0.0 thing. Nope. That's just the way the world is apparently is just like somebody uh you know <laughs> went into a graphic design software and just went like all over the place just like it looks like a painting that would have been painted by dimitri from sly 2 after no one liked his artwork and he started making like the gross forgeries of all the other artwork that's such an obscure reference there i doubt many people are gonna <laughs> know exactly what i'm talking about there but that's straight what it looks like wait how before we vote on the next place to go to how close do i have to get wow that was delayed there oh there's the next titan i just want to see how close i get before it starts looking more normal is all i want to see there as a cliff prior to the first say you shouldn't be able to climb yet but the game glitched you on top of it so you can walk around the entire map already wow and yeah merry christmas to all there um but yeah game freak really well let's take breath of the wild can't use elder ranks as both are in development at the same time and do none of what made people like that game yeah seems about right also if the dawn fan is fully rendered over there and that bird was fully rendered in the past does that mean that like all the titan pokemon in the world are just fully rendered at all times even if you're not remotely close because like you know, that's kind of the impression that I'm getting here. I mean, this one's on the way. Maybe we'll just do this one and then vote on the next one. I just want to see how close I can get to that before things start to come into a, come into detail. Yeah, that's what I want to know is why the cliffs look liquefied. I swear I pressed A to pick that up. Soft sand. Oh, great. Yeah, that sure is surprising. I found that out in the desert. Yoink. I will take all that fun stuff there. But yeah, anyway, um, in terms of recent happenings over here, and stuff like i was mentioning earlier christmas eve this past day oh it's one minute until christmas day it's 11 59 p.m right now um i got together with my mom's side of the family and you know during uh during that i have some cousins that you know we typically will do stuff for one another and like my uh like my cousin that i grew up playing a lot of games with where you know you call me those things and i uh i wasn't sure what to get him so i just got him a bunch of toys for his dog 
Speaking of, it looks like my Tookie is now done killing that stuffy toy, and now she's conked out. She had fun ripping it to shreds, and now she's uh, now she's out for the night. Uh, so I just got him a bunch of stuff like that. And uh, my cousin, who's the dad of my little cousins there, who, you know, I do a bunch of gaming stuff with, and, you know, I'm working on that truck project with, and all kinds of stuff there. Wow, I need to get really, really close to make it look any better, because it still doesn't look better. Anyway, um, while stuff was going around with presents and stuff, um, my little cousin comes up to me and is like, Oh, we, uh, we ordered something for you, but it's not in yet. So, since, you know, today is Christmas Eve, we may as well tell you what it is. And I was like, oh, okay. I wasn't, you know, really expecting anything, but... And he told me what it is. Apparently, what they have in store for me is a 3D printer. And so, I, <laughs> I was just like, wait, you ordered me what? <laughs> what the? <laughs> like... Wait a hot second. And then my cousin, his dad, like, explained it further to me. He was like, yeah, there was a, uh, there was a used 3D printer that, online that someone didn't want anymore. So, ordered that, and I'm, you know, working on 3D printing some other parts. Because they have, like, four 3D printers at their place. So he was like, yeah, I'm working on 3D printing some parts for it to, you know, you know, put the whole thing together. Apparently, they're waiting on some other parts to come in that are necessary for it to, like, finish putting it together. And then, like, when it's done, we'll have me over one day for, like, a tutorial on how to, to like, get that thing to work. Um, so, um, so I'm slightly in, I'm slightly flabbergasted, slightly in disbelief of, like, uh, what? Because that is not, <laughs> that is not any small matter, any laughing matter to be getting for someone. That's t freaking insane. So, so there's just that. Yeah, th that's that. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Apparently, it's gonna need, like, a decent bit of space, because as he was explaining it to me, apparently it's a model that, you know, has the nozzle that moves- that, Oh, come on! That moves left and right and up and down, but it doesn't move down the last axis. How it gets the last axis is, like, the board itself that it's printing onto. That's the thing that moves. So, at first, I was like, oh, maybe I could just clear out some of this space here and put it there. No. No. That, uh, that ain't happening. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Oh, come on. So I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put it. Um, one of the, uh, one of the ideas that I thought is like, oh, maybe I should go to like Ikea or something and get like a small square table and maybe put it in front of my game shelf over there and like that little square corner or something because I don't necessarily go and grab games super frequently and stone sloth coming out of nowhere somebody for three months now i appreciate the three month resub there stone sloth welcome back to team and harmonic enjoy another month of the emotes and the sub badge and all that fun stuff not even a message with that just a just a resub i guess we're not doing dawn fan after all i want to see how close i need to get because that's still all weird over there you know <laughs> this is the case i guess i got across the bridge i do appreciate it there but yeah so there's that but yeah, I guess they figured, you know, it was something that I would be interested in. Which I am, absolutely. You know, sometimes I'll request stuff to be uh, 3D printed through them. Usually for other people there. Like, I've 3D printed things for Guzma. I'm figuring out 3D printing things for Anma. I've 3D printed stuff for Mortis that's been sent to him. I've 3D printed stuff through them for, for several people by now. Oh, wait, it looks kind of normal over here. Do I need to get a little bit farther now? Wait, no, there's still some glitchiness of, like, the world kind of not existing in a place over there. So maybe I gotta get even closer still. Um, so, you know, then whenever I feel like 3D printing something or requesting something, I could just do it myself in that case. But, yeah, like, do I just put it in that corner? Do I put it somewhere else? I thought you were an item at first. So, yeah, there's a... Uh, that part of the world is still, like, not quite existing over there. Most of it isn't, like, clipped up anymore, but not quite all of it. So, yeah, there might be, a, there might be some 3D printing stuff going on in the- Gosh dang, I thought you were an item again! Ah, oh, man. So, yeah, game seems to run slightly better on the current patch. It definitely seems like it. But, you know, a lot of the jankness, like, still isn't fixed there. Hopefully this month you can be around more. I do appreciate it there. But, like I've said around this channel before, any time spent around here is already more than I could ever ask for. Because there's, like, oh. Well, that was dumb. Um... Because there's, like, what, 5 million monthly Twitch streamers and, like, 500 hours of YouTube video upload every minute or something like that. So any time already spent tuning into- Whoa! Any time already spent, like, tuning into my content is already, like, more than I could ever ask for. 
So, like, no one should ever feel obligated to, uh, you know, spend more time around here. If anyone wants to spend, like, you know, time around here, that's already more than I can ever ask for, you know? And it's already super appreciated. Wait, am I getting close to the, uh, to the water one? I just wanted to see how close I needed to get for the world to look at least somewhat okay. Which, you know, I guess you could say that it is now. But, you know, <laughs> the mountains themselves look like someone just tried out the terrain tool in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 for the first time. Hey there, Harmonia. This rumor has it the false dragon titan lurks somewhere in this lake, yeah? But not a single person's ever caught a glimpse of it. Oh, maybe we're doing this one, uh. Must be some kind of truly terrifying beast. But how are we supposed to search for a thing when we don't even know what it looks like? Sure would be handy if it just ran around crying, I'm the titan or something. If only, right? If only. Is that gonna, is that gonna happen? Hey, look, items. Oh, they're popping from this distance. You love to see it. Oh, there's a lot of items around here. So, yeah, I guess I'm gonna start 3D printing things around here in the nearish future, so. There's a, there's that. So, my cousin was just telling me, oh, yeah, I just gotta get, like, some last few parts in and make sure that it's all properly set up and stuff. Um, I'll give you, like, a couple spools of plastic to give you, get you started and stuff. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, has it been going, by the way, worth $60 yet? I would say no. I feel, oh, there's a thing where Bob there. What's interesting is a lot of people have been saying that gameplay wise that this is like one of the best Pokemon games that they've ever played. But like, you know, I can't for sure speak for other people. But if I had to guess, I feel like a lot of it is just like the novelty of being able to play Pokemon in open world. Just playing a game that is genuinely different to the Pokemon games that, you know, everyone's played before, you know, is why I feel like it is. Because, like, if I think in my head about every open world game that I've played before, in terms of, like, how good I've found the game was, this would probably be at, like, the bottom of that list. I would even put it underneath Watch Dogs Legion. Like, I, uh, <laughs> like, I was not a very big fan of a lot of the- Like, there were some cool ideas they had going in Watch Dogs Legion, but I feel like that game was just, like, a game- of nothing but throwing cool ideas all over the place, but never fleshing out any single one of those cool ideas. Just being like a whole experiment of like, let's see how many cool ideas we can put in here and like do nothing with them, um, is the way that I kind of felt about Watch Dogs Legion. So it never had anything that really compelled me to continue playing there because none of the core ideas with it were fleshed out enough to warrant me like coming and playing. Of course I continue to play as like a reviewer and stuff and I like playing the Watch Dogs games to an extent. Um, but I would probably place this lower than that. That isn't to say it's completely devoid of fun. There is fun to be had with this game. Some of the world is still not existing over there. There is definitely still some fun to be had with this game. It's not like it's complete garbage and it's got nothing going for it or anything like that. But in terms of open world games, like I have a whole chapter on it in the uh, in the Scarlet and Violet essay, which only has chapter one done of, uh, you know, everything before release, and chapter two, which just talks about how it handles open world. I haven't worked on any of the other chapters yet. I guess I could start working on the music chapter without having beaten the game yet. I guess that's one that doesn't require beating the game. I can just listen through the soundtracks. Maybe I'll work on that at some point, but anyway, I have a whole dedicated chapter just talking about the concept of open world, how games would handle open world, how Pokemon itself is a naturally linear system and doesn't apply to open world without you know, making some drastic differences to, you know, gameplay to account for that. And they didn't really do anything like that. Because, you know, a level-based system is a naturally linear system. Especially in something like this, a turn-based game, where your team and your levels can decide whether a battle is even possible or not. Like, take Elden Ring, for example. Elden Ring is also a level-based system. But the difference between Elden Ring and this, like, gameplay-wise, in this context... Is Pokemon is a turn-based, like, I guess you could call a strategy game. Um, it's a turn-based RPG, is what it is. Whereas Elden Ring is an action game. Like, there's a lot more skill involved in something like Elden Ring, as opposed to Pokemon, where it's, like, first and foremost, like, your outcomes are gonna be determined by, like, your team and your levels, and then only secondarily by your skill. In something like Elden Ring, like, you can be level 1 and go against, like, whatever kind of boss, but it'll still be possible. It might be darn near impossible if you're, like, going with no weapons and just trying to punch, like, Moog the Lord of Blood or something like that. It'll feel darn near impossible. It'll be quite a challenge. But it's possible. That's the, like, that's the big point there and what makes an open world format in something like Elden Ring 
so lucrative and so much fun as opposed to something like Pokemon where you go and try like a spicy challenge early. Like I have done several times in this game, like the Pokemon League or like the gym with Gresha. And it was fun to challenge myself while being severely underleveled. But had I done it earlier or with like certain team setups, there it would just be straight up impossible. Like if I just started the game and I went right to Gresha, it would not be possible to win, you know? It just straight up would not be with only my starter Pokemon or like a couple wild Pokemon I catch along the way. So, what's really incredible about action games like Elden Ring is that while doing stuff early can be a major challenge, it's still possible. But in something level based like Pokemon, you can go up to things that are just straight up impossible. You know, like an open world format does not naturally apply to a level based system like, oh my goodness, you can just come on land does not naturally apply to a level-based system like Pokemon. You would need to take, like, some drastic changes to the way that you handle progression in a level-based system that's not, like, a real-time action game um, to make it work in open-world format. In my chapter on open world in the Scarlet and Violet essay, the game that I draw parallels to is Xenoblade Chronicles X. A Xenoblade Chronicles X is, you know, a real-time strategy game. And, like, it can be determined by your levels and builds as well. Like, it's... You know, a good balance of, like, levels and skill and stuff like that. But there are absolutely situations where if you do them early in Xenoblade Chronicles X, or any Xenoblade game, but Xenoblade X is the open world one, um, while the other ones just have open world aspects. Like, there are definitely times that, like, it will be impossible. But none of them are, like, important story things that you can do early. It still expects you to do things in a particular order, story-wise. And in that way, it keeps the player, like, in a way that they will encounter challenge along the way, but it should never be at a point that it's basically darn near impossible. Especially considering you have to do, like, the prerequisite missions leading up to the main story mission, you know? So, there is that. Hello, hello, Prisma Wyvern. How are you doing today? I see your demon name a Pokemon there. Should I just go to this? Sure. So, like, I feel like a lot of people are enamored with this game from the perspective that it's open world Pokemon. And just, they're finally playing something new after feeling like, you know, playing the exact same game over and over again with, you know, the last however many years of Pokemon. Like, a lot of people are having a lot of fun with, you know, the fact that it's finally something new. And I don't want to discredit that. You know, that's absolutely valid there. But in terms of, you know, so in terms of quality as a Pokemon game, it's like, yeah, this is amazing. It's something new that they've never done before. Wow, that's so cool. But in terms of its quality as an open world video game, it's not great. So that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my uh, answer to that. So, you know. But yeah, let's see here. One of the YouTubers that act man asked a good question for people that played Scarlet and Violet. How do you describe Paldea? Like somebody took the terrain tool of roller... What the... Wait, it... Bergmiter in the water? Wait. Freaking leave me alone. Get out of here. I got places to be. So if you don't mind, you're gonna walk off the platform. Why is it so laggy? Why is it so laggy? What happened to the frame rate? Anyway, Paldea looks like someone is playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 for the first time in their life. Um, and tinkered around with the terrain tool is what it, uh, is what it looks like. And apparently that is a bit much for the game to handle. Whoa! Like, a bit much. Like, it really shows that we need a Switch Pro. Paldea to me is, yeah, there's icebergs in the water. Gosh dang it! Um... Visuals, it's like someone tinkered around with the terrain tool in RCT3 for the first time. Gameplay-wise, it's just a world with nothing in it but Pokemon. Which doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing when, you know, Pokemon's all about its Pokemon. But, you know, if you're playing an open-world game for, like, the joy of discovery and seeing what kind of things are out there, like collectibles, side quests, the bits of lore, stuff like that, and the only thing you're offering in your open world to find is Pokemon and, I guess, fast travel points, and I guess give it cool coins if you really want to press it. Oh my goodness, this frame rate. Then I feel like you've kind of failed at capturing a player's imagination to want to go and explore. Oh, that's another one of those weird things. Failed to capture the wonder of actually wanting to go and explore an open world. Because an open world game, I feel like, should have like all kinds of mysteries and cool things to discover. The, the biggest example that I do for that in my video essay script so far, is actually Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Like, you can sail around and find all kinds of ships to take on, 
um, that, you know, you can go after someone's early, so high risk, high reward, but it'll always still be possible. You can go around and use treasure maps to find buried treasure. You can just find treasure chests around just as is. You can find collectibles that lets you work up to like super spicy armor and stuff like that. Like the mine armor that I think deflects bullets or whatever the heck it was. Um, you can take assassination contracts as side missions. You can find more songs, more shanties for your crew to sing as you explore around. Like the stuff that's around for like exploring the world of Assassin's Creed Black Flag is a lot. And you can also play Black Flag on the Switch, so I would highly recommend for anyone that actually wants to explore a quite interesting open world game. That game released in like 2013, something like that. Um, I don't know, do I want to fight you even? Um, you should put in some effort coming all the way out here on your own little legs. So Paldea to me is an ugly world with nothing in it but Pokemon. And nothing else to discover. And what's the point of even exploring early if you don't have the gym badges to get the wild Pokemon you find to listen to you? You know? So, there's uh, there's that. Um, Paldea has plains, mountains, generic, desert, coast, water town. Yeah, that, exactly. Speaking of the water town, I, um, <laughs> my uh, title on that one video of the worst water town I've ever seen, apparently I found out that it's prone to making some people really, really seething mad at me. So, <laughs> so yesterday I changed the title to the best water town I've ever seen. Because apparently it's capable of causing, like, incredible offense to some, I guess. And we wouldn't want that to happen, right? This is a, this is an offense-free channel, right? Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's see here. Um, you describe Paldea humorously as Kaelid, but somehow worse. <laughs> wow. Um, sure, I'll probably just kill with this, right? I love this camera. Um, open world was cool and all, but they didn't do level scale, so it kind of ruins the point of an open world Pokemon game in Europe. Yeah, that's kind of what I feel there. I watched a, uh, hard drive review of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet recently, and I really like the hard drive. They always do things really comedically. And one of the things that was mentioned at the end of the video was just like, Oh my goodness, if you, if you want level scaling then, like, you're actually so dumb, because the, uh, reviewer, one of the things he really liked about the game was the challenge of being able to tackle, like, some gyms early, and being able to, like, really challenge himself. And level scaling, and being able to challenge oneself, well, I've just ripped a piece of tape off of a box under my computer, anyway, level scaling and challenging oneself do not necessarily have to be mutually exclusive, because there's a magical thing that exists in so many video games called difficulty modes. Whoa! Something that, uh, is nigh unheard of in Pokemon. There was technically that one thing in, like, Black and White 2. Wait, who was this? Like, I've seen some people criticize the idea of level scaling as something that would naturally take away their ability to, like, have that challenge that they like by doing this game. But the way that I see it is these things do not need to be mutually exclusive. Just add difficulty modes. You know. So, there's that. I mean, that could be pretty spicy. I'll actually take off Shadow Punch here. Um, yeah, Elden Ring doesn't have level scale and they made it work, but it works because of the Soulsborne format. Yeah, and it's like an action game, like I was mentioning before, where it's like, no matter what your level is, any boss should, in theory, be possible. If you just, quote-unquote, get good, or what, whatever the kids are saying these days. You know, I have no idea where the heck I'm supposed to go for this, uh, for this Titan here. But yeah, I generally like the concept that you can traverse the entire world, considering Sword and Shield had you on rails at a time, but the world itself could definitely need improvement, yeah. Like, it has potential. I think it'd be really cool if Pokemon took, like, a progression format, like, uh, like Xenoblade Chronicles X. I should have no idea what to do here. I'm gonna be honest. Um, so let's see here. See more information not verified. Highly dangerous Pokemon said to lurk in Kasaroya Lake, luring in other creatures close and feeding on them. Appearance unknown, but mouth likely large. Use extreme caution. What do you mean, luring in? You're saying something. That means you're important. Right? But yeah, holy smoke, explain more about this difficulty mode. Yeah, I know. Like, it's such a such a crazy foreign concept. It brings such promise. I feel like I'm a like I'm a medieval preacher going from town to town to like spread my religion, except I'm going around spreading the idea of difficulty modes. Um But yeah, Saints Row 4 is also a good example of an open world. There's no collision here. Do I just interact with you? I guess so. Um Good example of a world game, there are so many things you can do before even getting into the story. Wait, what? Do I just have to, like, not do anything here, basically? And just have the other creature come and, uh, 
Like, it's gotta be one of the Dodon whatever the hecks. Right? Or something or other. But yeah. Um, so many things you can do before even getting into the story. You can throw yourself around as a ragdoll. Literally just blow things up. Beat up cops for no reason. Or just jump around the city. That sounds like screwing around in, uh, in Breath of the Wild. Which is always a chill, fun time. I love Fosbury flopping all over the place in that game. Um... You insulted some random town in a video game. You might as well insult my entire family. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Wait. Well, are you supposed to be defeated then? Well... The heck? You had a text box, so like... Wait. They all do here. Wait, so do I just have to go around defeating them all and then like maybe the Titan Pokemon will appear? Or something? Because the wild Pokemon typically do not have like little text bubbles. Man, yeah, let's see. You're always bringing this up, but you played Pokemon Unbound before your computer broke. Is that some sort of a fan game then? Um, and that was one of the best Pokemon experiences you've ever had. The game did a lot of cool things, like you start in a snow-themed town, and you thought it was so cool, like, why can't we choose which town to start at, or at least which environment we want to be to make, to want to be in? It's one of those quality of life things that make everyone's experience much more memorable and unique. Yeah, like, if, imagine if Pokemon did something like Octopath Traveler, where it's like, here's all these different stories, which one do you want to start with? How do you want to start your tale? I'm on that rock. I'm just there. Um, <laughs> you know... Um, but yeah, honestly, the reason you're fascinated by the Soulsborne form is because you could literally make the weakest character possible and still be everything in the game. Yeah, it's still possible. It'd be ludicrously hard, but it's possible. Unlike something like Pokemon, where it's, like, impossible at certain points. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, that's just the way that these games work as a turn-based RPG. But that means that it's not going to naturally apply to an open-world format without making some drastic changes to the way that you handle progression in a manner like Xenoblade Chronicles X did for its progression, you know? Oh, it needs to be this one specifically, then num. <laughs> I'm just unfazed. I'm just gonna stand here and then Angie a second later. What did, was there details that just despawned? Let me look at the stream manager. Yep, there was bush and grass that just despawned with that. I don't know what's going on with this massive close up, but um, yeah, just unfazed for a hot second there. But yeah, I kill all the Tetsu gear. It's not required, but you might as well. I guess it was that specific one. Level scale on Pokemon can work. The ROM hat crystal clear has level scaling. And it can get hard, huh? Yeah, again, like you can have challenge and level scaling. They're not exclusive things there. But yeah, uh, <laughs> wait. Why are these sushi dragon love to commit sewer slide? What? Yeah, what now? But yeah, that's honestly why you're obsessed with FromSoft RPGs. It's the way the format works and truly being able to beat the game with any playstyle. And you mean any playstyle. Yeah, you can literally do anything. When uh, when my little cousin first started playing Elden Ring. He... <laughs> nice, uh, nice sinking animation there. Um, amazing. Um, you know how I had all that trouble with Godric or whatever his face was? Like the second main boss. Um, he went to freaking Kaled and got like the rot the rot dog summoned thing Bob, and then he just like went into the godric fight or whatever the heck godfrey i don't remember which one is which so many names that sound similar in that game um and imbued him with scarlet rot and then just ran away while he slowly died and he won so there was that i was chatting with him about the Soulsborne games earlier and uh what the heck um, and apparently he tried to get into the Dark Souls games because those are shared from my Steam library as well, and namely into Dark Souls 3 because I told him that was the fastest one. But he just can't, like, he's apparently beaten Elden Ring, like, either seven or eight times. It, what? Amazing cutscenes. He was telling me that he's beat Elden Ring, I forget whether it was seven or eight times, but a lot of times. And, <laughs> amazing game. Um, and apparently after trying to get into Dark Souls, he just couldn't because it was too slow for him. Like, not enough of a challenge. So, <laughs> so there was that. I was like, oh, well, maybe you should try Dark Souls 3. He was like, that's the one I tried. It was too slow. <laughs> After playing Elden Ring, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I was talking about, like, the Steam Winter Sale. And I picked up some games during the Steam Winter Sale that, like, I might cover eventually. One of them being Sekiro. And I was mentioning that to a different cousin of mine. My little cousin overheard that. He was like, oh, you bought Sekiro? I was like, yeah, I did. He was like, oh, okay, I'm going to play that one next then. <laughs> is the uh, is the case because like family sharing and stuff like that. Um, since Sekiro is apparently super fast, I'm only you find the Titan. <laughs> Fun fact there. So that's it. Sure is one big uh, dragon. Wait, is it even a dragon or is it a fish? L leave it to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the only video game that you'll be able to find on the Switch that lags even just loading the text at the bottom of the screen. Huh? 
Hi! T Cinematic masterpiece. The, the little sushi guy got eaten up by the Titan! Eesh. Didn't expect to see the food chain in action today. Okay. Well. Oh no. He's got an orange effect now. Oh no. So I guess his Pokemon is just like whatever. Uh, matches the corresponding Titan that we're going after and stuff. But yeah. Let's see here. Choose your path. Do. Uh, wait. Do you want to start as a random kiddo from a town? A cringy influencer? A born adult having a shitty mundane life? Having multiple jobs? Um. <laughs> but yeah. Is anyone in here able to vouch for Dragon Quest? Someone at your job keeps hounding you to try, but he's the only person you know who plays it. Talk to Lancer about that. Um, this food chain's got me pretty fascinated. Oh, I'm gonna dig in and make a meal of this battle. Next time you see Lancer in the chat, just ask him. Um, Sekiro is the hardest Soulsborne game, so he'll probably enjoy that in that case. So he'll probably end up enjoying that. Other way, level scaling works in open world games. Genshin in the open world game Genshin Impact is by using something called world level. Affect the enemy level. The player can just adjust it manually, plus one or minus one. So you can kind of, like, adjust your own difficulty to your liking. Kind of like a... Uh, gosh dang it! Kind of like a Xenoblade 2 situation where you can tinker with, like, basically anything in the game and, like, augment your own challenge or something like that. Maybe. Well, maybe not to quite the same degree as a Xenoblade 2 then. But a similar idea. You know. Uh, you went fish. It's a true Christmas miracle. Trainer turned into Jesus standing on water. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> A Christmas miracle. Oh yeah. In case anyone uh, missed it during the uh, during the last stream, fun fact. Speaking about Jesus, the beginning of last stream, I told the story that oh goodbye. Um, I told the story my university professor told us about basically the known history of the quote unquote real Jesus's foreskin from uh, the medieval period up until today. Apparently, the last time I was heard from was 1983, he was telling me. Maybe I'll Google it one of these days and, like, read up on it for myself. But, yeah, fun fact. That was something that we talked about during the uh, last session for anyone who missed it. Now you just get to hear that that's a thing that happened completely out of context and be like, wait, what the hell? Um, we did it, Harmonia. Now the Titan's taken care of. Next up on the menu is that sick weed. Let's get stoned. Let's play into the long-haired guy stereotype, which I would know nothing about. Well, oh, little sushi guy escaped without becoming that thing's lunch. Also, while we were playing video games um, together at the family gathering, I'll sometimes wear my glasses there to, like, clearly see the details on the TV and stuff. Um, I'm just... It's a glasses stream today, I guess. <laughs> so what's going on? What? So I think we'll have fight two. Wow, okay. World level affects loot drops. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, but yeah. No Minecraft dungeons do? Will it be worth having- Oh, I'm fully healed up and stuff. Cool. Tetsugiri the False Dragon Titan. Will it be worth looking into, uh, playing just a smidge of Minecraft dungeons just for comparison's sake? I should just play rough, because you're just playing Dragon type or something, right? Yeah, go after him, not me. Go after him. Yeah, much by recoil. You love to see the repeating textures on the uh, on the distant mountains over there. Uh. Oh! Screw this guy in particular. <laughs> well. Oh, does he, he doesn't have any other Pokemon? Okay. Well. Bam, I guess. Well, I'll just drop down from, like, the Fortnite bus above or something, I guess. I don't know. Wow, are you kidding me? Um, I'm just gonna do this and then we'll see there. You are just mentioning that RPGs, like, I assume that's Diablo, um, and Minecraft Dungeons use the world level system as part of its grind. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, so this would be the play here, right? We dungeon on every difficulty with a friend when the game came out all that time ago? Oh, jeez. Wow, am I just barely enough in the water that it warrants the thing? Oh, wow. Well, come on. Get him, Kirby. Get him. No, no, no. Life sucks, man. Uh, okay, action roleplay game. Gotcha, gotcha. 
well, let's have this be outrageous then. I don't know. Sure. Let's have it be outrageous. Love the graphics. What, in this game or in Minecraft Dungeons? Aren't the repeating textures beautiful? I love, like, the PNG leaves on the trees over there. <laughs> As well. Can't forget that. Oh, get banished to the quantum realm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Appear the Titan Tatsugiri. Wow, I guess Kirby doesn't get any experience. Sucks a suck. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Sometimes it'd be like that, you know? Oh, I'm looking over at OBS and realizing that I turned the volume down for... I think it was a uh, near Automata on the Switch recently. And that game was much louder, so I can actually adjust the volume. I think the game's been pretty quiet here, so... It's up at, like, the default max right now. We'll see if that's too loud. I'll probably turn it down in a bit. Ah, nice job, Harmonia. <laughs> that's my hard-working little bud. Okay, yeah, it's definitely quite louder now. And the Titan was both those Pokemon together? Like some sort of combo meal. Kind of combo meal. Maybe. Well, one came out of here, which means should be some Urban Mystica inside. Let's go, Harmonia. Let's go. Let's do it. I love the repeated cliff texture that now it looks like imitation leather. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? And for luck, there will be another stack of weed here. Be another joint somewhere in this cave. Is that a placeholder Pokeball right in the center? Are you kidding me? This is no longer even the day one version. This is version 1.1. This has been patched. Like, this is updated. I knew it. That's not an item Pokeball. That's just like a placeholder that marks the center of the cave. And it hasn't even been patched. The game has been out for over a month now. Wait, no. It came out on the... Yeah, it came out on the 18th. Over a month now. And then... Okay. They just really don't test their games. Um, it really is here. This is one of the herbs. Make no mistake. This sounds like a skill issue. <laughs> Alright, got the spicy Herba Mystica. I'm gonna adjust it down just two decibels. And then we're probably good. But yeah. Um, actually the placeholder Pokeball is actually model stored for the player? Wait, what does that mean exactly? Um, <laughs> we did it. Thanks, Harmonia. Now then, let's see. What does the book have to say? So it seems spicy herba mystica is supposed to boost your metabolism. It's your circulation a boost that helps flush out all those toxins. Along with a lot of sweat. I don't know where to shove that book. If I can just slip this into a tasty sandwich and get him to eat some. Well, what are we waiting for, Harmonia? It's time to dig in. Are you really trying to get me to eat it? Like, let me whip something up for us. Pokemon has evolved, Pokemon Game Freak. Was that one of their slang things for the marketing of this game? Some studios also need over a month to make one of the core mechanics cooking actually work. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty embarrassing situation right there. To be fair, nobody even noticed it, like, for a good while into a play in the game. And they probably wouldn't have noticed it in playtesting either. Because I guess they never thought to check, like, those actual numbers. Like, it just gave, like, a placebo effect of, like, oh, I'm, ge I'm getting more experience now. And then it was like a month after a, after the game had already been out when people started actually running some of the numbers after being suspicious like uh, this doesn't seem like it adds up and being like wow this actually doesn't work and like in that case when the developers heard they were like oh crap and they actually patched it like really soon after I do have some memes related to like the not working cooking system on my computer but not a massive ton because as soon as the memes started coming out it got patched like really soon after so, like, you know, the devs were made aware of it, like, pretty soon after it came to light and at least patched it there. As opposed to this, where it's just like, yeah, who cares? You know? So, there's that. Placeholder Pokeball looks like the Pokeball of the Pokemon in the first slot of your party. A proper manipulation can show Pokemon models and clothing models. But yeah, the Placeholder Pokeball is model stored for the player and it's not hidden under the map. I don't know why it wouldn't be hidden under the map, but, uh... Like, I guess of all the weird placeholder things that they could do or model storage like they may as well go with something basic like a pokeball but why not hidden out of bounds speaking of hidden out of bounds um while i was at this uh at this gathering one of the things that was shown to me by my little cousin is i don't know if he figured out how to or just heard about it online but he was showing me how to clip out of bounds in this one area but only if you have the uh the other abilities do i have display capture 2 here yeah i posted it in the uh pokemon chat in the discord server earlier is the case but uh this right here 
<laughs> he pulled out his switch and he like climbed up this wall in a cave and then he just flew around the void and I was like, oh, okay. And so I took a picture of it and I posted it in the Discord because it cracked me up. So, you know, there's a, there's that. This is how I didn't feel the need to apologize for the cooking situation. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, a single mechanic as opposed to, you know, the entire game barely functioning on the hardware, you know. Bob's your uncle. There you go, my special whimsical herb filled super sandwich. Yeah, it comes with a side of Titan Badge. It's a token of my gratitude, of course. Alright. Well. Okay. Well. That's, uh, getting overcooked there, it seems a little bit. That would just be, like, charred and burnt. I don't think I'd want to eat that, either. I don't know what kind of Chef Arvin proclaims himself to be, but I don't think I would eat his cooking. I think I'd probably get sick, like, pretty fast by it, you know? You know? There's, uh, there's that. Thought. All those Pokemon can be linked together, so the devs just check no show them how all place all just disappear. Yeah, there should just be, like, an opacity, like, check thing where Bob. Like, in my, uh... In my graphic design software, for example, I could just set the opacity to zero and then, like, no no problem there. But yeah, hello, hello, NF Silverblade. Yeah, that's Kirby right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, you again? One thing I will give this game over Legends is the caves do look better. You want to give your sandwich to Karidon? <laughs> yeah, if you select this... It's just, it's just this. So, uh, maybe you want to give your sandwich to Karidon after all. An alternative universe, Karidon died from eating Arvin's sandwich from eating the nasty patty. Karidon's um, whole, like, digestive system is gonna be so screwed by the end of this whole plotline. Trying to say thanks or something. Well, good thing I made extra. You're helping me out a whole bunch with the hard stuff, so it's only fair that you get more. Wait, like, as in me and Karidon together, or just like Karidon? Because Karidon didn't really do anything about that, uh, that dude, I definitely, absolutely did not make extra so that Karidon could have a sandwich, okay? He is trying to get into Karidon's system, but trying to hide it for some reason. Um, yes, we did a full playthrough of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Is the, uh, is the case. Chaotic Senna, and that works well for, uh, for Senna's massive hammer as well. I'm just now realizing, because, you know... Kirby was the community chosen Pokemon there. I was surprised that, you know, Uni was a suggestion by Nishara there, but then Senna wasn't. <laughs> Just because Uni seemed, because of the uh, Uni ears, and then seeming like the uh, kind of bitch that would just smack someone that messes with her, you know. Um, yeah, I'm big Xenoblade nerd. I've done full playthroughs of all the uh, of all the Xenoblade Chronicles titles. I believe the uh, total amount of parts of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 I have up on the channel is... 176? Or was it 186? I don't remember. But that's how many are scheduled. It goes up until like the end of January, something like that. Um, in terms of daily uploads ever since uh, ever since launch. Um, <laughs> so there was that. I don't know, ask the Shara. Um, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> yeah, good point. There's Sabra. I don't know. Did it grow stronger again? So, I mean... Kirby looked too in it too sinister to be innocent, Senna. <laughs> Tikaton's just a little bit too sinister, is the uh is the answer there. Man, these Urban Mystica really do pack a punch, don't they? Gonna eat the tablecloth now? I mean, they'd better. Also, I'm really up the creek. Well. Don't you dare touch that! There's a bomb with the screen bugging out again. That isn't for you! Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have showed it like that. Guess I should at least tell you the full story, Harmonia. It started when a vengeful sandwich god descended upon the earth. Come on out, bud. He's gonna have the other legendary? Nope. This is messed, Bustiff, my partner. That's having the weird, like, Mobius effect on him, too. Mobius, Morbius, my goodness, I played too much Xenoblade 3. Um, this is my current team. There you go, bud. Eat up. The sandwich should help you feel better. Slowly now. Take your time. It's probably burnt. Small bites are fine. Just chew nice and slow.
my buddy here was pretty bad a while ago. Real bad, in fact. And I guess we've established from the beginning of this game that sandwiches apparently have healing powers. He never really recovered. Hmm, illusion of choice. Nothing seems to help. Not potions, not Pokemon centers. Nothing. AKA, what I inputted there literally had no impact at all. Um, oh yeah, that. My boss stuff here is the only thing the world I care about. The only thing. So, I promised I'd make him better. Whatever it takes. I searched online, I read books, looked all over and tried every cure and remedy I could find. But nothing really worked. I'd almost given up hope. That's when I found out about the Herba Mystica. <laughs> Whoa! You've uh, done your research there. Um, <laughs> you're, that's what you remember there, Mortis? Um, sorry that I'm not quite as on top of things with the chat. There's when there's things going on. I found it in my mom's lab. Uh, Herba Mystica. Area Zero was home to wondrous herbs that instantly impart vigor when eaten. We dubbed them Herba Mystica and attempted to grow some in areas around Paldea. However, before we could harvest, the herbs were eaten by Pokemon, which in turn grew large and strong. We called these Titan Pokemon. <laughs> Look at the guy in the bottom left. He's like, oh, glowy Eevee. <laughs> This book full of crazy stories and legends and things. Stuff nobody would usually believe. But I believe it. I think what it says is true. According to this book, eating all five Herba Mystica can cure anything that ails you. Can it cure the big dumb? In any case, I must have paused and pulled his ice before he ate that last herb. But they've warmed up a little now. I'm sure they have. Hello, hello, banana boy. Oh, you done eating, bud? Well, come on into our shenanigans. Whoa. Got like an effect to your eyes now. Eh, Mabostev, can, can you see? Uh, are your eyes open? Well, it didn't seem like his eyes were closed. It just seemed like there was no light in them at all. And then like it flicked on like someone flicked a little light switch or something like that. Yes, I did it. it it's been so long since he was able to open his eyes. I was so worried. Oh man, I, I'm so, I'm so glad. I guess there's no eye closed animation in this game at all. So they just like unloaded the eye part of the open eyes. Wow, like the attention to detail in this game is just off the charts, I must say. Uh, look at him. Like, this would be a lot more emotional if the dog's eyes were actually closed and then they slowly opened. And instead of it just being like, the eyes are open, but there's none of the color to it. And then it's just like, flick on. I, I, like, huh? Yes, that's how eyes work. Those fiery orange little eyes. Hard to even tell if they're open or not, but I know the difference. <laughs> I'm glad you do, because I sure don't. The power of these herbs is amazing. I knew the book wasn't lying. I'm gonna bring Mast off Mad Bo God damn it. Back to full health, I swear it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, so. That's my story. Hello, hello, Blaze Plots. Um, what should you start with? Wait, like which starter? Well, your options are a cute weed cat, Spanish ducklet, are the thing. I hope that narrowed it down. Three herbs to go. <laughs> Let's bind them together. Um. Oh, I don't know. 